Um, what I'm going to look at today is the drawing tools, which is the top tab on the left hand panel. I've got a map here on the right hand side, which is a primary school. And I'm going to go through each of the drawing tools in turn. So we start by opening the drawing tools by clicking on the top tab. Let's start with looking at what we've got available. There are, there are markers, there are shapes, lines, text. You can measure things. You can add a text box. You can add your own images. And um, there's a buffer tool and a grid reference tool. There are also tools on the bottom line here, which are grayed out at the moment, but these will allow you to modify any of the shapes and lines that you add to the map later. I'm going to start with the markers and add a number of markers to the map. As you can see, when I click on the markers tab, you get a number of different markers that you can choose from. Some of these you can change the color and size and shape and so on, and some of them are fixed. Let's start with the balloon one, and I'm going to add a number of different markers to different houses here, just by way of an example. All I'm doing is selecting the marker and then clicking on the map where I want the marker to appear. I can choose a different marker by selecting a different marker like this, in which case I click on the map and just um, add them to the map that way. I'm going to use a different one again, just for variety to show you what they look like. As you can see, when I put markers on the map, some of these line and fill settings appear at the bottom. I'm going to use the select tool, which is the a single arrow, and I'm going to select one of my markers here. It will go yellow when it's selected. Once it's selected yellow, I can then use the line settings here to change the color around the edge of the marker and to change its middle color. Let's do something that will make it stand out. Now, as you can see, when I select anywhere off the marker, just to click anywhere else on the map, you can see that the marker I selected previously has now got a red edge and a yellow center rather than having a black edge and a blue center. If I use the selection box here, I can in fact select all my markers just by clicking and dragging a box over all of them. As you can see, they're all highlighted in yellow and the marker settings are available again. So this way I can change all the marker settings to be the same. So I'm going to give them a green outline and a green fill setting. I can change the opacity of the green fill like this by using this slider here. And again, when I click anywhere else on the map to unselect everything, you'll see that all my markers now have the same fill and line settings. I can do the same with shapes. So I'm going to draw a shape here. As you can see, when I click the shape marker at the top row, I then get a number of different options for shapes. The polygon is the most commonly used one. This will give you a, an irregular polygon with uh, straight sides. You can use a freehand drawing polygon too, which will give you um, a, a much more fluid shape. And there are preset shapes as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Let's start with the, the, uh, the polygon, irregular polygon shape here. So I click on the map to start drawing. I'm just going to draw the edge of the field here. And I can just click to change direction every time I want to change direction. And I double click to stop drawing my shape. And there is my shape complete. As you can see, the line and fill settings appear on the left hand panel again. And again, I can choose the select bu uh, button, select my shape when it turns yellow with the yellow outline. And I can then change the fill settings this way. So I can choose to make it, uh, let's make it blue with blue edge and a paler blue fill like this. And then I click anywhere off the map to unselect the shape and the settings I've just made will take effect. I can also draw some lines. So the lines here will um, draw from where I start to where I finish. I can make it a multiple angle line. So I could go from this house here, out here and along to school this way. Click, click, click. And all I do is double click to finish the line. I can draw a straight line as well. One, double click. And I can draw um, as many lines as I like straight like that. So double click to finish. Again, the line settings appear on the left hand panel and I can select each line individually like this. So it turns yellow and then I can change the color of those lines accordingly. I could make them each a different color. Or I can make them all the same color. I can also change the um, whether it's a dotted line or a solid line or a dashed line. And I can also change the weight of the line. So let's make this one a dotted green line seven point. Click anywhere off the map and you can see that the settings change. Let's do the last one here and make this one um, bright pink. And we'll do a dashed line so you can see what that looks like. A long dash, see what that looks like. Now we can have different sorts of lines. If I want to add text to the map, I can click the text button here. What I need to do now is to put a marker on the map. So I, I click on the map to know where my to place my text and it will produce a pop-up box like this. So I can say my house and click OK. And the, marking, the, the marker that I, the, sorry, the anchor point that I put down will be 
um, in the bottom left hand corner of the, of the text. When I see that little grab hand, I can then pick this text up and move it around, and put it wherever I like. Similarly, if I use the select button, I can click on it once and you'll see that the little there's a little pale yellow line around the anchor point. I can leave the text as it is by clicking OK. If that little pale yellow circle is still there, the text is still selected and I can change the text setting here in the left hand panel. So I'm going to make this one red. I'm going to make it not bold. I'm going to make it smaller and I'm going to change the font. And again, when I click off the map, off the item itself, anywhere else on the map, it, it unselects and the text settings that I have made will take effect. When it comes to the measurement tool, I can apply this to any of the shapes or lines that I've already drawn. So I click on the measure tool and then I simply select the shape that I want to measure. Shapes like this will give me um, an area measurement and the lines will give me a distance measurement. So I can measure each line in turn. I have to reselect the measure tool each time but it will give me the distance of, that I've drawn each line like this. If I want to add a text box, I can click on the text box here. This again will add an anchor point and then give me a little box to write, write some text in. So I'm going to draw an anchor point here and I'm going to type some text. My chance is here. And I can click off the box in order to settle it there. I want to run my mouse over this, I can then pick it pick up the box and move it around like, oops, this is slightly tricky. I can pick the box up and move it around somehow. <laughs> I can certainly move the um, the anchor point if I want to. And if I get, there we go, I can pick the box up and reposition that to where I want. I can also change the size and shape of it like this. And I can move it again as a complete unit. If I wanted to add my own photograph to the map, I can do the, exactly the same thing using the image button here. So I click on the map where I want the image anchor to be. I can then choose browse to upload the file that I've got um, ready made here, true blue Peter style, click upload and the image is there. I can then move the image around to make sure it's in the right position for my map. And I can also move the anchor point as well. If I want to add a grid reference, I can choose the grid reference uh, tool here. There is an automatic setting, which means that it will give you a grid reference that is appropriate for the scale of the map that you're looking at. But in some cases, you may want a very specific size of grid reference for the for the purpose that you, you wish to use it for. So if you wanted a six digit grid reference, you could just click on the map and it will always give you a six figure grid reference. If you choose the automatic one, the grid reference will change according to the scale of the map. So this particular map is very detailed, so you will get a very detailed grid reference. If you were looking at a road atlas map, you get a much less detailed grid ref. I would also like to show you the buffer tool. Buffer tool is fairly straightforward in that it will draw um, a distance away from the point or the line that you click. Let's start with the, the point tool. I'm going to enter a, a radius of 0 0.5 kilometers, and I'm going to see how many of the shapes that I've drawn lie for 0 0.5 kilometers from the school. All I need to do is use the blue dot that's on my mouse cursor, click, and it will automatically draw me a half a kilometre circle radius like this. Similarly, I can use the buffer tool to draw a line. If I wanted to draw a buffer zone of, say, 100 metres, I can type any value I like into the, the radius. I'm going to 100 metres from, um, uh, from the school boundary here. I'm just going to go down two sides of it. I can double click to finish my line. And that will give me a 100 meter buffer zone around the line that I've drawn. That's quite useful for looking at things like rivers and roads and distances um, from a particular um, linear feature. Again, I can select the, uh, the feature that I want. I'm going to select the circle one here and I'm going to change the uh, line and fill settings on this one, let's make it purple and like that, great. And click off and you can see my shape has changed. This map's getting quite confusing now. So let's look at how we delete features. You can either delete individual features on the basis of a click. So under the delete section here, choose the click button and I can click on one feature and it will just delete the one feature. Delete my buffer zone again and it deletes that. If I want to delete my text box, I can just click. Alternatively, if I want to delete, delete many of them, I can use the select box here and draw a box 
over those features that I want to select. All those are highlighted in yellow. I can then use the delete selected button in the middle here, and that will delete just those features. The other thing to show you with, um, with the shapes, I'm gonna go back to the shapes uh, field and show you some more of these. If I choose the freehand shape, I'm going to draw a rough shape like this. This is just for illustrative purposes. Um, all I'm doing is dragging my mouse and the moment I let go, my shape stops drawing. If I wanted to edit this feature, I can select it using the select tool here. So it goes yellow. And I then have the modify tools underneath that become available to me. So let's take these in turn. I can either label my feature, call it my shape, click OK, and it will label my feature that way. I can change the points on it. So clicking the points tool here, in which case I'll be able to just move individual points around. If this doesn't show up very well with a um, with a, an irregular polygon like this, but it's easier to show you with the regular ones. I can rotate my shape by clicking the, the rotate button and you'll see the blue arrow appears in the middle and then I can simply rotate my shape around just by clicking and dragging it to where I want it. I can scale my shape using the next button, which draws a, an invisible box around it. And I can then use this little blue dot in the corner to make the shape bigger or smaller. I can also transform the shape, which will change that size in both directions, like this, or swap it over completely to, to do a mirror image. If I was looking at an image, I could use the view button too. Let me show you that again with, um, with the more regular shape. I'm going to click the select button and I'm going to delete that shape there by clicking the delete on click button. If I was to choose a different shape, such as a triangle, I can draw a triangle like this. I can spin this around before I click. So when I click, the shape is fixed there. But if I choose the select tool now, select my triangle, I can then change the points on it to make it whatever shape I want, like this. But I can also choose the rotate button and then spin my shape around the central point again. If I want to delete everything, there's this handy button here which says delete all. Fortunately, it gives you a chance to check. If you hit the delete all drawings button, it's gone. There's no undo, you can't get it back. So do think twice. Delete all drawings and I'm back to my original link. That is a very quick run through of all the drawing tools. Um, we have another few minutes for questions if anybody has any.